Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Welcome to the Bird Bum. The dogs and I are back in the lower peninsula of Michigan this year looking for grouse and woodcock. Based on the drumming survey, unfortunately grouse numbers are supposed to be down this year, and that would be consistent with our experience this year. We didn't find as many grouse this year as we did last year. However, there were plenty of woodcock, and that was actually perfect for some of the young dogs I'm trying to get on birds. On this first morning, I took out Boogie and Y, and Y is a little two-year-old female with almost no wild bird hunting experience at all, so she's got quite a bit to figure out. But even on this first hunt, she makes good progress. As you can tell, Y gets pretty hyped up. Now, Y is not a big dog, but she is athletic and, and can be, if she's confident, pretty stylish on point. In fact, the Bird Bum logo, the dog in that logo, is Y from a picture I took of her when she was 14 months old. About 10 or 15 minutes into our hunt, I got a GPS alert that Boogie was on point about 80 yards away. I miss my fair share of these birds, and I think just the way they fly makes them surprisingly challenging to hit. Here, Boogie's pointing a grouse, and uh, you can see that Y actually at this point isn't backing, even though she does in training and in trials. Why? Why? Whoa! Whoa! Why? Why? Whoa! a grouse right up here I don't I know I didn't hit him with the first shot I don't think I did with the second I only caught a glimpse of this bird it first went left and then right and I did miss it on this bird that Boogie had pointed why I finally started backing and and I was so enamored with her backing that I really didn't pay enough attention to the bird why Ready for it. Here we have Boogie pointing and Y backing again. And for some reason, once I got into this, both dogs came off point. And there were multiple birds in here, and I think maybe a bird flushed that I couldn't find, which which led them to break point. They ended up bumping a bird, which I went ahead and shot. So Y found this bird on the ground, and unfortunately, she just chomped it hard a couple times and came back to me without the bird. And she retrieves quail just fine, but um, it's not uncommon. I've had dogs in the past that their first encounter with woodcock, they are reluctant to pick them up. So that was it for our first morning, and I think we had some pretty good bird contacts for Y, and I know Boogie had a good time. And ultimately, we ended up with two woodcock in the bag, some empty shotgun shells, and what I thought was an interesting-looking rock. 
This trip marked the one-year anniversary for me truck camping during these hunting trips. And the reason I started doing this, or the reason I had the idea to begin with, was to make these trips less expensive. I'm kind of headed towards retirement and I'm thinking, you know, less expensive ways of doing things. And usually housing was one of the more expensive parts of my trip. What's been surprising to me is how much I've grown to enjoy the truck camping part of the trips, both in terms of camping out with the dogs where I'm hunting and also the process of figuring out how to make it all work and how to make the experience more comfortable. In terms of the dollars and cents of it all, I kind of kept track of my costs this time and I brought my own food with me. So really my only cost or the main cost was the gas to get to and from Michigan and around Michigan while I was there and also the cost of a hunting license. Of course, there have been some upfront costs, but nothing like they would have been for an RV or even a camper. But again, I think the biggest benefit for me of this change has not been so much the saved money, although that's positive for sure, but it's the how much it's improved my trips overall. And, and something there's something I have enjoyed about doing it on a small scale as well. Okay, for the rest of the hunting trip, it pretty much rained off and on the entire time, and we even got caught in a bad thunderstorm at one point, but it also led to more camp time. While I'm waiting out a rainstorm, I hope anyway, that it will pass, uh, I thought I'd tell the story about how I ended up hunting uh, the lower peninsula of Michigan instead of um, the northern peninsula or northern Wisconsin. And it really stems from um, an encounter, a wolf encounter that I had several years ago. I was out with Boogie in northern Wisconsin. And I'd, it was in an area where I'd been a number of times before. and felt pretty comfortable there. I'd seen wolves, actually. Uh, I used to hunt Wisconsin quite a bit, you know, in the car. And from a distance, they looked kind of like a large German shepherd, maybe, I thought. Um, but anyway, I was working with Boogie. It was just me, so I wasn't talking. Uh, and he was, um, he was, had a, he didn't have a beeper collar on. He didn't have a bell on. He was just using GPS. And I was using GPS. And so we were kind of easing along, and we came into this clearing, and, and we're, uh, was walking around it and got to an area where about 10 yards away, maybe not even 10 yards away, there was suddenly this big commotion in this thick cover right there on the edge of the field or this opening. And uh, I initially thought maybe we were quiet and we'd walked up on some deer that were jumping up and were getting out of there. And, but uh, I heard one of whatever it was at that time running uh, down the hill and kind of towards the bottom and it was really making a lot of noise like uh, breaking sticks and, and turning over rocks and just a lot of noise and so I was like that's not a deer maybe <laughs> maybe it was a moose for some reason wolves didn't didn't enter my mind uh, at the time um, and so but then whatever the, there was a second whatever they were at that time um, and it maybe moved another 10 yards off and it's still in thick stuff I hadn't seen any of them and and I could hear it pacing back there. And eventually it did come into sight uh, about 20 yards away and it was a big, big black wolf. I was completely shocked by the size of it. I would say it, it stood as tall as a deer at least. Um, and uh, I, I was just completely shocked. And so uh, I shot, scared away. Um, that sent Boogie running actually kind of in the general direction, which was a mess. Um, but it, it left, uh, and then Boogie and I tried to leave the area. We did leave the area, and the wolves, I guess there were two of them, had gotten separated, and so they were on either side of us uh, howling, and, uh, and Boogie was looking all sheepish and everything, and so it was, it was, um, it was a pretty close call, and, and I was lucky, I think, that Boogie was close to me. The, the size of the wolf, uh, again, that surprised me uh, up close how big that, that wolf was, but anyway, Later, I looked, and Wisconsin actually has a depredation map, and I, I realized that um, afterwards that I was in an area uh, that was a high-risk area, that were, meaning that a dog had been gotten by wolves within a, a one-mile radius of that area, or I was within that radius of the, the, the taking. So um, anyway, for that reason, since then, I've been hunting in areas, and it kind of led me to the lower peninsula of Michigan and trying to figure out uh, new spots to hunt. But um, uh, now that I'm a couple years outside the experience and I'm considering going back to Wisconsin, I expect I will eventually, or or the northern peninsula of Michigan. Are you ready? Come on. Let's go. Crazy, crazy. 
Finally, the rain cleared up enough that uh, I could take the dogs out for an afternoon hunt. And importantly, here's some foreshadowing, the afternoon forecast hour to hour said there wouldn't be any more rain until later that night. For this walk, I took Boogie and Y out again to a place where I thought we might find some woodcock. When I got to Boogie and Y on this bird, I noticed that Y looked like she was pointing the bird also, which was a good step in the right direction for her. As you'll see, this cover was particularly thick, which I think created some confusion for the dogs when the birds flushed and made for a difficult shot. I didn't have a good shot at those. There were two of them. I've seen Boogie do this before, especially in thick cover where there are multiple birds. He'll take off after the flush and will encounter the scent of the bird he wasn't pointing and stop him pointing. A little later, I found that I actually connected with one of these birds and was able to find it. Nice bird. They're in here. So for me, this was the best part of the whole hunt. Y has gone on point on her own, and Boogie has come up to the right and is backing. So if there's a bird in here, this would be her first wild bird. Pointed her first bird. Good job, Y. Now, I missed that bird, but I saw where it went down. Good job, Y. I'm sorry I missed it. Come here, guys. Come on, Y. Come on, Y. Come here, Wyatt. Come here, Wyatt. Come here. Right here, Wyatt. Wyatt. Up here. Come on, let's go. Come on, Wyatt. Come here, Bogey. Bogey. Right here. Why? Come here. Why? Come here. Oh, got it that time. Come here, Boogie. There you go. Come here, Boogie. Come on, Boogie. Boogie. In a second here, I try really hard to get Y to retrieve this bird, and so I apologize ahead of time for how loud that is. I saw it. Come on, Y. There you go. Come on, why? Here you go. Come, why? Come. Here you go. Why? Come. Come. Why? Come. Why? Come. Boogie. Come on. Come on, Boogie. Come on, Boogie. Here you go. Come here, Boogie. Hold it, buddy. Hold it, buddy. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. Wow. Why? There you go, baby. That's your first bird. You got to work on retrieving it. That's a nice big bird. Good job, why? Good girl. Come here. Come here, why? Look at that. That's your first bird. Good girl. That's your first bird. Yeah, good girl. All right. All right. Good girl. Okay. On the heels of Wise first bird, it looks like we might get caught by an unexpected lightning storm. We're about two miles away from the truck still. Okay, guys. 
No, I'm bogey. Leave those. Leave those alone. Yeah. All right. Guys, that was <laughs> kind of hairy there for a while. Uh, glad we're back. And now that we are back, I think it was worth it. Why? Oh, now why is onto something? She's seeing birds everywhere. Next morning, there was a break in the weather, and I was able to get Hank and Y out for a short run. Here, I'd gotten GPS alerts for both Y and Hank, and when I got there, I found Hank on point and Y backing. We got one on point. <laughs> There's my second shot. Good job, Hank. Good job. Sorry, buddy. Come on, Hank. Hank has our last bird of the trip here on point, and you might have noticed at the beginning that I tried to call him off his point. Initially, when I came up, he was kind of flagging and didn't look very confident about where the bird was or if there was a bird. So I called him off, and he relocated and became much more staunch, which indicated to me that there was definitely a bird here. Good boy, Hank. Good boy, Hank. Good boy. Good boy. That's a nice bird. Nice bird. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.